Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at the solutions to questions 11 to 15 of the Junior Kangaroo paper from 2019. That's the follow-on round to the Junior Maths Challenge for students that have done really well in that paper. But I actually don't think you should watch this video because I've taken all of the questions from the Junior Kangaroo from 2019 as well as the Junior Olympiad from 2019 and put them into a totally free online course. So you can go over to that online course by clicking at the link in the description below and you can work through all of these questions one at a time and then watch my video solutions. I've also got a totally free course over there going through the Junior Maths Challenges from 2020 and 2021 if you haven't already seen that and I'll put that in the link that link in the description below as well um, if you haven't already taken the junior maths challenge the best place to start would be with the junior maths challenge papers and then go on to the kangaroo and the olympiad papers once you're ready for them question 11 it says two of the following four facts about a positive integer n are true and two are false and um, it's quite funny how easy this question is if you start doing it by using the answers. So I will talk about it more mathematically as well, but it's a multiple choice paper, so why not look at the answers here? We know the answer has to be one of them. If you're doing this in the time constraints, this is exactly the sort of thing you're meant to be doing. I just start checking. Okay, so I look at, is the answer A, 5? Um, well, 5 is divisible by 5, yes. It's not divisible by 11, it's not divisible by 55, and it is less than 10, so that's the answer. That one is uh, that one has exactly two of the statements being true and two of them being false, and that won't be true for any of the other ones uh, here. For example, you know, 55 is divisible by 55, 11, and 5, um, but not it's not less than 10. So three of them are true. Okay. So anyway, we've, we've answered the question at that point, and the real challenge you can just move on. Um, let's just think a little bit about slightly more mathematically how we might get there. So if it is divisible by 55, it would automatically have to also be divisible by 11 and divisible by 5. So if this third statement is true, then you always have to have the other two being true. So that means if only two of these statements are true, it can't be divisible by 55. So we can rule that one out. Um, and then we can look at the other options and say, well, if it's divisible by 11, it's going to have to be um, at least 11. You don't have to think about whether 0 is allowed here because it's got to be a positive integer. Um, and uh, so it can't be less than 10. So it can't be simultaneously divisible by 11 and less than 10. So that combination is, is not valid. If it were divisible by 11 and divisible by 5, it would also be divisible by 55. So we've ruled that combination out as well. So the only pair of statements that can be true are divisible by 5 and less than 10. And at that point, we know, uh, well, the only number divisible by 5 that's less than 10 is 5. And so again, we get the answer. But no need to do that much thinking. You've only got an hour to get through these questions, so try and find the quickest way possible and move on. Question 12 says, the shape in the diagram is made up of a rectangle, a square, and an equilateral triangle, all of which have the same perimeter. The length of the side of the square is nine. What is the length of the shorter sides uh, of the rectangle? So I'm just gonna make a bigger copy uh, of this uh, picture so we can work on it easily here. And, uh, so the key here is that all of the parts have the same perimeter. So we know we've got a square of side length nine, so all of its sides are nine, and that perimeter is four times nine, which is 36 centimeters. So when we look at the equilateral triangle, that also has to have a perimeter of 36 centimeters. It's got three equal sides, so 36 divided by three is 12, and each of the sides of the triangle must be 12. And uh, we also know that the perimeter of the rectangle is 36. Well, okay, we've got these two um, sides are both 12, so they add up to 24, and that leaves us with 12 centimeters for the other two sides uh, of the rectangle here and here. Um, so I just need to do uh, 12 divided by two, and that gives me six centimeters. And so the answer here is C. Question 13, it says, what is the minimum number of cubes of the same size required to fill a box with dimensions 30 by 40 by 50? Okay, so let's just um, think about what this looks like. So I've got some box uh, that I could just draw very uh, roughly here, cuboid. Um, my scales are not gonna be uh, perfect by any means. Um, and so let's say it's 30 in this dimension, 40 in this dimension, uh, and 50 uh, in this direction. And so I could fill it with 
one by one by one cubes, obviously, and that would have 30 times 40 times 50 of them. That's way bigger than any of these numbers here. Now, if I try to use like a, th so I could say, oh, it's 30 high, why not try a 30 by 30 by 30 cube? Well, okay, I would, I would have like a 30 by 30 by 30 cube in here, but then I'd have this space and I couldn't fill it exactly. So what this question is really asking is, uh, what size of cube is going to fit exactly into uh, the, so, so, that, so that it divides into each of these different uh, values, right? So it's really saying, what is the highest common factor of 30, 40, and 50, right? That will be the largest uh, cube side length that we can get in here. Any common factor will do so that uh, we can fill it perfectly with cubes. If I took two, for example, that's a common factor of 30, 40, and 50. So I could have, so I could do two by two by two cubes and it would fit. And the higher the common factor that we find, uh, the better we're gonna do. Uh, now the highest common factor of 30, 40, and 50 is pretty clearly 10. Um, you could use other methods to work this out, but you can see 10 is a common factor of all of them as well, because they all, they all end in a zero. And then three, four, and five didn't have any common factor, so we can't do any better than that. Um, so that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Uh, and then you see we can think about how many uh, cubes there will be in this diagram, and there'll be three high, four across, and five um, in this direction. So the number of cubes here will just be three times four times five. Uh, 12 times 5, which is 60, and so the answer here is C. So in question 14, Henry starts to read a 290-page book on a Sunday. He reads four pages every day except on Sundays when he reads 25 pages. How many days does it take him to finish the book? Uh, so, okay, so he starts on a Sunday where he reads 25 pages, and then the rest of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, we've got four, 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 four. So in a typical week here, he reads 25 plus six times four, which is 49, um, 49 pages. Now we've got 290 pages in total. So that looks to be about six weeks, right? Because 50 times six is 300. So 49 times six uh, would be 294. So you see, if he did this week one, two, three, four, five, and six, did the same, and he does the same thing, he's go, he would get to 294 pages uh, in total. So in that last week, um, he doesn't need to read anything uh, on the Saturday, um, and then that will take you to a total of 290 pages uh, instead. Right, so, uh, so how many days has it taken him to finish the book? Well, there's five full weeks, so that's five times seven days is 35, and then we've got six more days in the final week, uh, so 35 plus six uh, gives us 41, and so the answer here is A. In question 15, Amy, Bob, Kat, and D occupy the top four positions in a chess tournament. Uh, the sum of Amy's position, Bob's position, and D's position is six. The sum of Bob's position and Kat's position is six, and Bob finished ahead of Amy, and who came first in the tournament? One of the four people, or you can't be certain. Can't be certain is very rarely the right answer in these questions, but very occasionally it has been. So uh, we've got the positions one, two, three, and four to fill, and A, B, and D, all positions add together to give six. Now the only combination of three numbers that add together to give six here is one plus two plus three. It's the smallest sum of three numbers is six. Uh, so anything that includes the four is going to be bigger than six. So it must be that A, B, and D uh, fill up these top slots. And so we know that it must be Cat that came uh, fourth in the tournament. We now know that the sum of Bob's position and Cat's position is six. Um, so Cat is four, that means Bob must be two. Uh, so Bob is second here. And we also know that Bob finished ahead of Amy. So Amy can't be first here, uh, Amy must be third. Um, and that means that D must have one. And so the answer is D, D. So I really hope that was useful. If you're preparing for maths challenges, either the Junior Maths Challenge or the Kangaroo or the Olympiad papers, don't forget about my online courses. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. There's free courses there at the moment working through the Junior Maths Challenge from 2020 and 2021 with hints and solutions. And uh, there are other courses about the Junior maths challenge and preparing for maths challenges over there already and over the coming months and years i'm going to be making 
uh, a lot more content as well. So sign up for the mailing list if you want to know about that or keep checking back here on YouTube uh, or over at the Maths or Us website.